God be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. I, 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 I hate it. I hate it to bunt. I hate it to bunt. I could hit home runs. I, 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 I didn't strike out that much. I was a great batter. I hated to bunt. I, I hated to bunt. The coach know when he called on me to bunt. I hated it. But the, because it was a sacrifice. It wasn't gonna be. Yes. It wasn't my personal benefit. Yeah. But it was gonna benefit the team. Yeah. It was something to help us as a team win. And even me knowing that, let somebody else bunt. I hate to bunt. <laughs> let me swing away. You know what I'm saying? That's just who I was. I didn't, yeah. I didn't like to bunt. Damn, but then the two, hey, damn it. Hey, damn it. Even though the man was on third, black, on third base. He, he, on first base, trying to get the second, whatever. That's his business. You better get ready to run, because I'm going for the fifth, baby. <laughs> <laughs> but look, but look, but look. So, so bunting would, would never originate from within my yeah. mind to bunt. No, it had to be somebody greater than me over me in authority to tell me to bunt. And then he was doing it from a team perspective. Because nine times out of ten, or a sacrifice fly, or whatever. Nine times out of ten, I'm going to get put out. <laughs> so it ain't doing nothing for my stats. It ain't helping me look good. It ain't doing nothing for me. <laughs> so why am I being required to do this? Well, because it ain't about you. It ain't about you. <laughs> That's funny right there, Jim. I hated the bunt, man. I'm be honest with you. <laughs> then I relate 100%. Or oh, pass the ball at the end of the game. <laughs> oh, I'm always open. basketball. No, I yeah. want to take that shot. <laughs> of course. There's three men on you, but you yeah. got a better shot. <laughs> I like baseball. The fact is that it's it's. it's it's really, it's really an ultimate team sport because I keep thinking about the fact is you don't want to bunt, but you got a man on third base, and all you're doing is do is trying to get that ball away from him. Exactly. But he can come in and score because he can. He has one choice: either go you or the man is going to score, and see, he can't afford it. See, from the team's perspective, the coach is supposed to be on the man on first base. Uh-huh. He focuses on himself. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You <laughs> see, in the kingdom, uh, one of the verses that we, that, that uh, Galatians, they say, it talks about, the, you know, it talks about the fruit of the spirit. But what we <laughs> fail to realize when we read that verse, we don't go down and look at the end of that verse. You see, oh, yeah. Yeah. He, he, he tells you what the fruit of the spirit is. And then he says, <laughs> Right after he finished listening to the truth, in verse 24, he said, look, he said, now listen now, I told you the truth of the spirit, oh, yeah, now I'm going to tell you what makes possible, what gives, what makes the way of the truth of the spirit possible, and he said, they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and that's love. It. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it right there. <laughs> You see, Ooh. if he can get you to understand, now listen now, it's, it's not that God is, when, when he put Christ on the cross, he's already dealt with your affections and lust. Uh -huh. What he's got to do now is get you to believe it. Yeah. That's true. Hey, picture on your script you just said, I had the, uh, this was in my scripture, my, my slide, but the piece I think if people run for is that last, Peter 25 and 26. What about the rest of that? Because when you crucify the lust of the flesh, right, what happens then? Okay, now we can walk in the spirit. Yes. Now we can live in the spirit. Yes. And now we can be shunning vain glory. That's Come it. on now. Yeah. That's, that's it. it. That's it. That's, that's it. it. Now we that's not it. Be worried about my that's sex it. Because I'm, because I'm a bird. That's <laughs> it. Right. It was vain glory. That's it. That's it. it. That's glory. it. Vain. 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 Anything that exhausts you is vain. 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 Because I, I'm not bunting. <laughs> because Jesus said. <laughs> He glorified the Father. Yeah. Our opportunity is to glorify. When we die to self, is to glorify God. 
Let's see it. Jimmy Hill yeah. got five hits, but we lost the game. Yeah. But you know what? I got five hits, though. <laughs> and, they, and they can't take look, that away. Look, 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 don't don't discount that now. Don't discount that. <laughs> <laughs> we lost the game and we ain't going to the playoffs. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I have missed games the next game because I got the bunt signal and I swung away. I'm like, coach, I'm not bunt. I'm just not going to do it. Let me tell you something. When you see that picture and he keeps shaking his head, no. And he keeps shaking his head, no. And he keeps shaking his head, no. He tells, he, he tells the catcher, I don't want to throw that. Yeah. I, I know what's best to throw. Yeah. The catcher just studied the batters. He know exactly what they're missing at. He know exactly what they love. He he didn't he didn't he didn't, he didn't, he didn't have this battle. He know where you need to put the ball at. I'm shaking my yeah. head. Uh-uh. I'm throwing a fastball <laughs> on this joke. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I know exactly. But you know what, Bishop? Let me just say one thing. But you know what, Bishop? And to me, and to me, that's that 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 is what sports has got doggone felt fallen to. Yeah. Now it's all about individualism, and it's not about the team anymore. Now it's about the fact that I did have forty points, even though we're not gonna make the playoff. We got beat. It doesn't matter. I had forty because I'm trying yeah. to get a shoe deal. I'm trying to get a commercial. I'm trying to, you know. So so now that's what that's what sports has kind of for me has lost it in that they've gotten away from we're going to do whatever we need to do as individuals yeah. to help the team hey jimmy that's saying you know, that's fun. why i gotta give lebron his props man i really do i i can't stand a player you know as, as because he gets away with a whole lot of you know not following the rules but uh, he plays for L.A. now, so he's one of the greatest players. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I mean, it's the same thing Michael Jordan, but, right? but But no, but but he he doesn't have to shoot right. the shot all the time. Right. You know, he he he, he builds the team up. Right. And, and in doing that, this guy elevates an entire team. Exactly. And they're saying that Michael Jordan did too, right? Michael Jordan had great stats. Great stat. But it's only when he started cutting back on his stats so he could share with the rest of them that mm -hmm. they, they got the prize, right? My question sometimes even with politics, if we're sitting there saying, I want the White House, we gotta get the White House. We gotta we gotta control all the houses. That's vain glory. But you know what the thing is, is that it that the other way is the kingdom of God. It's a distribution of power, distribution and application of power. The right. guy, the strongest guy uplifts and edifies everybody else. Exactly. That's, that's that's how the kingdom works. And when Jesus told them the, the kingdoms of this world lord over each other, yeah, they, through their power they control everybody. Yes. Through the power that we are given, we empower. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Come on, man. That's why it's an everlasting kingdom because it's built bottom up. That's mm -hmm. that transition you're talking about. Mm -hmm. That transition yeah, or that merging, what you change the order of things. Yeah, Jimmy, totally. He was able to the transition. If you look at a pyramid, the pyramid is a perfect example of the kingdom of God. Yeah. The biggest portion of the pyramid is five portions at the bottom. So okay. if you're the strongest man in the room, or the smartest man in the room, or the richest man in the room, your resources are distributed in such a manner that they uplift and edify everybody else. It empowers them to maximize their potential. Exactly. But that's a very difficult, that's a servant's role. It's yeah. a, it, it, the, the world system, carnality, the Dornism does not ascribe to that, can't appreciate it, and cannot, the kingdom is that, and unless you're born again, you really can't even see it. You can't even see it. And it, see it, 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 it. And that's what I think that transition was about. And yep. I close, well, let's close with this one scripture here. That's what the bishop just read, that comes to two scriptures, but yeah. Read the rest of this, brother, ask this last one, you don't mind, I like call on you anyway. I like call on you. What's, what's uh, 16? 24 to 28. Okay. <laughs> then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is a man profit if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? 
or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Come on now. For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels. Yes. And then he shall reward every man according to his work. Come on. Verily I say unto you, there be some standing here yes. who shall not taste of the of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. And, and that's, that's what I was saying for the fact that the people are really giving up their uh, soul for vain glory. Okay, let, me, let, me, let me tell you something. Now, let me ask you a question. Do you think that that verse is connected to the verse you just read in Galatians chapter 5? I think verse so. It's vain glory. It's vain glory, I think so. No, no, no. I'm, I'm talking about the one where it said they that are Christ to crucify the flesh with the oh. sexual below. Would, would it be the part about where it says he uh, deny himself? Did that crucify oneself? Right? Let's look at it again. Let's make sure. Okay, got the cross in here. One, one second. One second. <laughs> I'm going to need one more person that unless lust can conceive, it can't bring forth yeah. sin. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and, and with that, Elder, Satan is always present. Yes. Not even Christ, you know, pushed him away. Right. Yeah. He, he was present when, when Christ was here. So yeah. the lust of the flesh is only simple when you act on it. Act on it. Well, now listen up. The lust of the flesh is with you right now. Yes, yeah. sir. Oh, yes, sir. Well, yeah. listen up. But here's his good part. He, he is, and, and God, I think, has fashioned it in this fashion as a means to, 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 to making sure that we don't just honor him with our lips. Come mm. on. <laughs> I, I, I know you say you love me. I know you said I'm talking to your lips and the tears running down your eyes. But what I really need to know that if you really love me, then you deny ungodly and worldly lust. Yeah. Now listen, the power of sin is broken when your lust has nobody to answer the door. Mm -hmm. Whoa! <laughs> when, when your lust knocks on the door, Woo. the person inside needs to give a dead response. <laughs> and he said, if any man come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Yeah. So that when the lust and the cares of this life and the deceitfulness of the riches knock on the door, Lord, you, can, you, you can say, I'm crucified. That was, that was, that was, that was hmm. Woo. Listen, we broke up last week. I want another man now. I want another man. His name is Jesus. Yeah. Woo. I have to make this servant. And this is how God delivers us from the power of sin. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> so that's true. So if you don't, if you ain't willing to die, uh huh, then then brother Johnson, you can forget about being able to discern God's voice and know what He's gonna say next or where He's gonna lead you. Then God like. What am I tell you something for? Because <laughs> what you do is do. <laughs> so the end objective, I say, of faith. Listen carefully now. Don't don't misunderstand me. That God uses faith to bring about obedience, <laughs> and obedience is the expression of one's love for God. Because. The only, and, and John, Jesus said, if a man will love me, thank you what he said, that he will obey my word. My words. And, and so we get, we get the beauty of faith being used to, to, to bring us into obedience to God. And when we're brought into obedience to God, then we get to see who God really is. Yeah. It is obedience that we really come to know God, to know the deep love and the deep knowledge 
and the purposes and the will of God are revealed to those who are willing to walk in obedience to God. Because those who ain't gonna walk in obedience, what are you gonna reveal stuff to you for? Is, is, is walking in obedience walking in truth? Is that mm -hmm. what it is? Walking in obedience and walking in truth? Yes. So we ask him what is true? Yeah. We're walking in obedience to God is walking in truth. Yes. Yes, sir. Yeah. Wow. Hey, I think we gotta chill on that, brother Anderson. Hey, 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 hey. Anybody yes, want to meet? Hey, Bishop, it's time to do the communion unless you got something else to say. Come back. I'm good. We gotta study. I, I do want to admonish y'all. I do want to admonish y'all one thing for us. Okay. On yesterday, we took the time since we on the pandemic. Yeah. And I, I, I listen. I told my wife every day I have Black Monday, Black Tuesday, Black Wednesday, Black Thursday because I'm always black. Come so on. I don't have no Black Friday. I got. I'm every day in my life. I'm black. You black? Okay. <laughs> but on yesterday, I took the time to read this book. And, and God spoke to me while I read. They're very plain. Strange thing. I read this book called The State of Empire. And it's written by a guy named John Glaub. G-L-U-B-B. -B. And John Glaub, John Glaub really talks about the, the failures of, of nations in the way that they do history. Okay. He said, we should not study history as a, about nations. We should study history in relationship to people. Okay. So what he really said, what we really ought to be studying is the history of, the history of human nature. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. That's right. Yeah. Not the I history agree with that on the history of, of America or the history of Georgia or the history of Europe. We ought to be studying the history of human nature. Yes. But I, I think it would be good for you to read that because if, when you read that, what you're going to see is that how that human nature has plagued not only the individual, but how the human nature has plagued the nation, yes. how it has plagued the world as a whole, yes. how it has plagued, plagued civilization down through the histories of time. The one factor that you always find that brings civilization to an end it's human nature. Human nature. And so you can understand why God said that thing needs to be sacrificed. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. If I, if I can kill that thing in you, I can get a kingdom that won't end. Mm. That's true, though. But that's where the wars come from. That's where the yeah. politics gets into it. Human nature, it put it in it, it causes all types of lies, deception, deceit, you know? It's human nature. Yeah, fallen human nature. Fallen, <laughs> fallen nature. Fallen human nature. It's, it's human a, nature to kill, right? Sir? It's human nature. Say that again. Because that's what the first man did. Just, hey. Mm -hmm. yep. The first man, human nature, was to kill. Yep. Wow. It's the corruption wow. of the sun. And not, a, and not continue God's word. God told him, if you do well, be Will you not also be rewarded? Will you not also be rewarded? Come on. He had to stay able, able, stayed in the word, continue in God's word, continue in God's obedience. Cain said not to do that. And that's why they wanted, just like Cain wanted to kill Abel, those disciples, not the disciples, but the people around Jesus, John, they wanted to kill him because he was continuing in God's word. Amen. So you want to do the communion? Elder, uh, Elder, Elder go ahead and do the communion for us. All right. Your prayers out. Hallelujah. On the night that he was betrayed. Yes, sir. On the night that he was betrayed, yes, he took bread. He blessed it. He broke it and he gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat all of you. This is my body, which shall be broken for you. Whenever you do this, do it in remembrance of me. So they take it, they break, and they eat.
after supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave thanks and praise. He blessed him and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, drink all of it. But this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It shall be shed for you and for all men, so that sins may be forgiven. Whenever you do this, do it in remembrance of me. So they took the cup and they drank. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Father God, thank you for this moment of fellowship among brethren. You said with two or three together together in your name, there you are in the midst. Yes. <laughs> we receive that word. We receive the revelation knowledge that you imparted to us this day. Hmm. We pray, Lord God, that you continually strengthen us. Yes that we might execute your will in the earth and that the sons of God might be revealed. Mm. We offer prayers for this nation and for its leadership this day, Lord God. Yes, Lord. Not being solely associated with this nation, but actually being citizens of the kingdom. Yes. And having an audience with God, our Father. Yes. We come before you on behalf of the United States of America and its leadership today. Mm. We pray, Father God, that for those you stay this plague lord jesus yes for those who would take this democracy and destroy it mm. we pray that you would hinder them lord god come on now and we pray father god because we would love a place that we can preach the gospel yes and further the kingdom in peace yes and so father god we pray that you just bless us, bless our households, bless the people who are engaged in this gospel. Yes. Have mercy upon those who are having to suffer the persecutions that some are dying now for the name of Jesus. Yes. And if it comes to that in our nation, Lord God, we pray that you strengthen us to be able to go through the same. Yes. Lord God, just continually be strong in us mm. and manifest your glory through us yes. that others may be drawn to you and receive eternal life even as we receive it. This I pray in the name of my Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen and amen. 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 amen.